Hey all, hope you all are doing well. So, Ian again. Recently, I've been watching way too many YouTube videos about cameras and how you shouldn't buy the latest camera and how the Sony A7R 2 is good enough for you. Well, I think most of the cameras are good enough for most people, but I think that I deserve a little bit better. <laughs> So I went out to buy the A7R5 and I'm really convinced that it will make me a better photographer. We went to take some photos at the bird park. Um, yeah, have a look for yourself. I have not taken pictures of birds before but I think the camera makes me look like a hero. Hello and good morning. I'm here at Bird Paradise today. So uh, on the trails of becoming a National Geographic photographer, I have decided to come and look for an expert. So I'm waiting for my expert to come. I don't see him anywhere. So, wait a while. So of course I had to bring my Nikon F3 and today I'm using Fuji Superior 400 Extra. So our expert has arrived. Jokes aside, this was an event organized by Sony Singapore to encourage people to take on some wildlife photography. So as you can see, people of all ages were here. So this is the real expert and let me share with you some setup tips for the A7R5 before we actually get shooting. So for the basic setup of the camera, I guess you would want to use aperture priority so you can set the aperture as you wish. I also like to shoot in raw compressed because I feel that it gives the full resolution but doesn't really lose much in terms of detail and um, you can shoot higher FPS compared to just raw uncompressed. For white balance, we'll just use auto cause it's raw. And for ISO, I generally like to set it to auto so the camera can decide for me what is the lowest ISO possible for the given aperture and shutter speed. So for the maximum in this camera, today we are using something like 6400. Actually for the photos you'll see later, it never goes above 5000. So 6400 is good enough. So there's also another setting on the Sony cameras where you can set the minimum shutter speed for auto ISO. So generally I would like to set it to faster if we are doing some action shots because it will bump up the shutter speed and also increase ISO to compensate for that. So it's about one stop difference from standard to fast and then another stop from fast to faster in terms of shutter speed. So your ISO would also increase by one stop as you change from standard to fast and another stop from fast to faster. You can also set your own desired minimum shutter speed for auto ISO but I prefer to just let the camera do it because it's simpler. It's always easier to just see standard, fast and faster rather than a bunch of numbers. So the pro conducting the class today uses an expensive camera with an expensive lens and he's a pro and he uses them. So don't listen to what all the other YouTubers say about pros using something cheap and it works. Uh, the pros like the expensive stuff because it gets them the results. So I would say bird photography is a subset of wildlife photography and there are two types. One is basically just taking a portrait of the bird and another one is something like sports photography where you're trying to catch them doing something like flying or eating. So equipped with a very basic 70 to 200 mm, I sought to just get some portraits of small birds first because I guess they're the lowest hanging fruit. So the birds were being fed so they were just right up in front of your camera. So it's a no-brainer, just frame and shoot. So these were the other participants for the event today. So you can see some of them are quite accomplished photographers and some of them are just beginning like me. So you can hear in the background the shutters of everyone. So everyone was shooting at I think their max burst shutter. So you may think that the people who do bird watching and bird photography are all um, retirees but I beg to differ, it's quite interesting and I, I see the beauty in this. So besides the digital camera that I was using, I also brought along my Nikon F3 and shot Fuji Superior 400 Extra which is quite hard to come by these days, especially in America. So I've come to realize after today's uh, walkabout that the camera really plays an important role in bird and wildlife photography. Most of the shots are dependent on how fast your camera can take the shot, how fast the burst rate is, and how good your autofocus is in following and tracking the objects. 
For such instances where you are photographing very fast moving objects such as birds and animals, I think it's worthwhile to invest in the most expensive modern body you can afford because you can't fight technology. The way that it focuses, the way that it tracks the subject, your old cameras can only dream of and if you miss the shot especially for wildlife, you may never get a second chance at it. So after getting some portraits of some birds, uh, I decided to try something more difficult and just get them in motion. So getting them in motion and in flight is quite difficult as you can see from the next few photos. So sometimes they're hiding behind trees, sometimes they're flying away from you, and then sometimes when you get them, they're so fast that when you pan, you miss them totally. So surprisingly enough, I managed to capture some birds flying on film. So I asked my expert what was the best settings for capturing some motion. So now I'll go through some settings uh, recommended by the experts on how you should configure the AF for some Sony cameras. Alright, so the first thing we need to do is go into your focus menu. So the first thing you want to set is the focus mode. So if you are doing something that needs tracking, you want continuous. Then you can set your focus priority to whether you want to release the shutter or you want to get locked on AF. So you can decide over here. I generally like balanced. So for your tracking sensitivity, you can either choose to have it more locked on so that it doesn't jump subjects. Like let's say if you're photographing a flock of birds, maybe you just want the one in front. Um, and then there's one responsive where it like, tries to find the, the, the best subject that it thinks. So just play around and find the best setting for you. So full-time DMF is something a bit handy if your focus has locked onto something that you don't want it to lock on. You can just rotate the focus ring and manually override the focus. However, you should be aware that you are manually focusing so the accuracy is dependent on yourself. So also do remember to set your AF areas appropriately. So if you are tracking something like a bird flying in the sky without any um, objects blocking it, you can set it to wide area so you can just point and just aim and shoot. I like the expanded spot option because it gives you the accuracy of a smaller focusing point but if you can't lock on to the small point, it also takes into account a larger point surrounding it. You can also move it around the screen by using the joystick, uh, giving you quite a lot of flexibility in positioning your focus point. So you can also use the tracking wide uh, which uses the whole area to track your object. So if your bird is like flying across the screen like this, it will just pick it up and start tracking. So one more trick for the Sony cameras is that you can configure the AF on button to be AF on plus tracking. So you can see over here, we're going into the custom key settings and so it's tracking on plus AF on. So once you press the button and hold it down, it tracks the subject in the focus area that you have selected. And if you keep holding it, it keeps tracking so you can just fire off the shutter. So this gives you flexibility where you still can have your single shot AF by half pressing the shutter and if you want to track, you just press the AF on. So as you can see for these shots, I have uh, put down the ISO aperture and shutter speeds for reference. So I've used the auto ISO with a faster shutter speed option. So you can see the shutter speeds are consistently quite high, maybe always above 500 at least. And even though the ISO gets up all the way there, it's still quite clean. I don't see much noise because we have so much light anyway. And don't forget that the noise performance on the modern full frame cameras are so good that you can just shoot at up to ISO 5000 and you have quite nice shadows with quite little noise. So the beauty of having a high resolution camera like this one with 61 megapixels is that your noise is consequently a lot smaller in size so it's not so apparent and the noise somehow looks more organic in nature because it's so much smaller and looks like film grain. So my friend was saying that this bird was quite rare, it's called a shoe bill. So it looks like it has a shoe for a beak, I don't know. Looks a bit grumpy though. So another thing to be mindful of when shooting birds or animals is that you should try to shoot with a small enough aperture so that you get most of the bird in focus. Uh, we tend to like to shoot everything wide open but for small birds like this and at very very uh, long focal lengths, 
sometimes the bird's eye may be in focus but the body is like totally soft so yeah just be mindful of that so i have no idea what this bird was doing it's probably practicing its morning yoga So when using the camera for taking photos of birds and other kinds of wildlife, I found that the new AI autofocus system by Sony is definitely not a scam and it really works actually quite well in real life. So it just glues onto the eye so you can see the tracking box on the eye and it just follows the bird as it moves about. So once again I tried to capture a bird in motion and I saw it falling out of the nest. And this bird has a really nice hairdo. Wonder where he goes to get it done. So this is a cock of the rock. I don't know why, but this one seems to have no beak. It's hidden. Does it even eat? So remember to check out the flamingos, there are many flamingos at the bird park. If you want to try catching some birds in flight, my advice is to try something with a bigger bird such as this parrot over here because they fly a lot slower than the smaller birds. So my key takeaway from this session was to learn how to use the settings of the camera effectively to capture the motion and the tracking of the birds for the AF. I was also so amazed at how the modern cameras can track and recognize the subject so well that it just doesn't make sense to use an old camera in this day and age because it's just going to make your life difficult. All the YouTubers keep telling people to just buy an old camera because it's good enough. I don't know if they're broke or what, but if you can afford it, I would say just buy the best modern thing that you can afford and of course within your means. Don't listen to them, the pros use expensive cameras too. So if you like this, fly away and click the like button. See you!